our show. I have a special guest who, well, didn't come all the way from Oakville, but I thought you were coming from Oakville, but apparently you came in from Toronto today, so not too far of a hike, but Amy Slog it. Yes. I got that right. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, kind of a funny story. So, good friend of mine, dear, dear friend of mine, uh, known her, Jen, since I was four years old. We grew up ski racing together, and um, I know her and her brother, and we, we're, we're still very tight-knit community. And it was kind of funny because when I started this podcast, she reached out to me maybe about... I don't know, halfway through the year, and she said, you know, how are you getting guests for your podcast? Do you do go outbound, or do you take inbound recommendations? I was like, of course I take inbound recommendations. Like, who do you got for me? And she said, you have to have my boss on your show. Aww, She's an incredible awesome. person. She's such an awesome person. I was yeah. like, for sure, but, like, tell me a little bit about her. So you're the founder and CEO of Wink and Wave, which is a, a mobile beauty clinic and wellness clinic, if I'm not mistaken. Is yeah, that... we're a mobile beauty and wellness service. Okay. And you were the like the first in Toronto. Yeah, so we started in 2014. Yeah. And uh, we just started realizing that moms were really needing to have help. Like they were taking care of the kids and not having time to do simple things like going to get their hair cut getting their nails done. Like the, the simple things in life now are more challenging when you have a child. And did you realize this through personal experience? Yeah. yeah. So when my sister had her first child, I noticed <clears throat> she could never come with me to go get her nails done again. And I was like, that shouldn't stop. Like your life shouldn't stop just because you have kids. So I was like, how can we make it that this still exists and you can have services like now in your own home? So I just thought at that point, hey, I have a full-time job, but why don't I start something on the side? So, oh, the little side hustle for you. What, what was your, your full-time job at that time? So at that time, I was working um, for the show Love It or List It. Okay. And um, yeah, so I thought, hey, maybe I can do this in the evenings and weekends. So, Does that show still exist, by the way, Love It or List It in uh, Toronto? Well, I think they're finished filming. And I'm not sure if they're renewed. Okay. Just yeah. just out of curiosity. Okay, so we were working yeah. for Lever to List It. You were kind of behind the scenes, not on camera, though. No, I was not on camera. I was behind the scenes. Yeah, I was there for about 15 years. Oh, wow. So I did Lever to List It Toronto, Lever to List It Vancouver, and Lever to List It North Carolina. And so I thought, just because my life wasn't So you chaotic. traveled all around at so that So, yeah, time? when we would start a new... Um, a new show in a new town, I would go and help uh, set up the crew, hire the crew, get their contracts. So you weren't going for every episode? No. Okay. Just but you would like go and like set them up and make sure that they were yeah, up and ready? Yeah, visit here and there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, yeah. So, sorry, how did you get into film and production and that side of things? So when I graduated from university, I um, was doing a post-grad in marketing, so I got a design degree was doing a postgrad in business and then a friend of mine was working in television and said hey they're really in need of somebody with a design background would you be interested and I'm like I have school and she's like but you could get a job like tomorrow so then I was like okay well I could finish my postgrad anytime right so, so you I, so you quit doing the postgrad did you ever finish it no, no. <laughs> I no. love these stories yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never finished it and I think my father who's a professor retired was very upset that I never finished it. Yes. And so I started there as a design coordinator on another HGTV show and uh, worked my way up and then finished as a VP of business affairs. Now, at that time, do you mind me asking how old were you? Like, did you kind of have to tell your parents and get permission? Like, were you afraid to tell your dad or was it like, yes. you know, you no, were I was totally quite independent? I was totally afraid. My dad said that I was making the wrong decision that I should finish school. And I said, I don't think I'd get an offer like this ever. Like, it's all connections. It's not really what you go to school for, mm -hmm. really. And I said, I think I need to, to try it. And so I tried it. And then it was not until probably the year before I left that he said that I made the right decision. Oh, that's always nice when it comes back around. Yeah, yeah. But for you, you had to kind of like lean into your gut at that time. Yes. I hear a lot of stories, right, of, of the pressures that parents put on their kids. And like they mean well. They want what's best for the most part for their children. So it's not coming from a bad place. No, for it's sure. It's coming from a learn from my mistakes a or a, yeah. a loving place. But like, you know, that kind of pressure can be debilitating for a lot of people. So did you just kind of have the confidence in yourself or was it like this is just my passion. I have to do this all 
like if I die and I don't try this, like I, I'm going to regret it? Where well, did the, the so gut I instinct come from? So I knew that um, I, my goal was definitely that I wanted to like move out of my parents' house. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to do that staying in school. And I knew that I wanted to do something in the design world. And I didn't want to um, do television particularly, but I loved that it had a design aspect. So I was like, hey, this is something completely different. And why not try it? And it would probably look really good on my resume, at least, if anything, right? It could take me right. places, so. And I guess at the end of the day, like you said, I can always go back. Yeah, like, I, I get that a lot of people don't, and it is difficult to go back when you're older, but there still always is the option. Schools are accepting people all the time. For sure. Right? Yeah, like, I've considered doing, like, my MBA, MBA now, even, part-time. So. Yeah. That's something that I've always Well, I did done. it part-time, so we can talk off-air yeah. any time about what that looks like. Um, because, yeah, I mean, it's a commitment, but it's not like you're going to school full-time and you, yeah. you have to cut off all ties from work and yeah, things yeah, like yeah, that yeah, to get yeah. it done, right? You can just dabble a couple courses here, a couple courses there. So. Totally. Yeah, so then after um, working in television for 15 years um, and starting this on the side, I realized after about a year of doing Wink and Wave on the side that it became such a big, um, I don't know. Success? <laughs> yeah, th that it was like taking up a lot of my time. Okay. And I was like, okay, I need to have this decision made whether I'm going to take this on and make it like something bigger. Because I got to a point where I was like, okay, there's only so much I can do because I'm working a full-time job. So Okay, I, so like, let, actually, if you don't mind me going back. So you decided, you know, you see your sister, you're like, okay, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, her, you know, she's changed in terms of like she can't do things that brought her happiness and like small little like you know trinkets of joy self care yeah. um, so let me start something so did you start it by yourself then yeah okay and and self funded i presume yeah yeah okay so you, so did do you know anything about starting a business like what was the first step that you took yeah so because i worked um, in love it or list it with a business background i knew how to like start a corporation i knew how to do a website I had a lot of lawyer contacts already, so I just kind of utilized the people that I knew in my circle. Um, and so, yeah, I had a website built. Um, I had an app built into the website for bookings, so people just didn't have to text me anymore because my phone was like blowing up like crazy. Right. And Actually, that's an interesting point. So. You kind of came up with the mobile idea on your own, or yeah. did you see this like other cities were doing it or other countries no, were doing it? No, I just it? thought that how can I create a business where I didn't have to rent another space and do it as like on a budget as possible and make it easy for moms, right? Like if they can't leave the house to go get their nails done because they have a child, we have to bring it to them, right? right? So I didn't even really think about mobile being like, the key in it other than like I just knew I had to get people built into people's homes okay so what are you thinking at the start then you, you thought I need an app right away or were you originally thinking if people just booked online uh, no I just be... knew that I mean an app doesn't really matter either way I just knew that I needed a booking system okay so a way for people to go online book their appointment and who was fulfilling the services was this you at the time or so at the very start I started because I got trained in the evenings doing lashes Okay. So that's where like wink and wave all started. It was purely just lashes, but I knew that I had to bring on more people for other services that right. obviously I didn't do. So So it started like just you, people booking you in your time just for me lashes. Just my time for lashes. Wow. And then did you tell any like your parents, your circle of friends, your sister, did you tell people or ask them at the time like, "Hey, do you think this is a good idea? Should I start this?" or were you just like I'm going no, for it? I just Go, yeah. Wow. Yeah. A lot so, of people I feel like would, would kind of test the waters, you know, like ask around. I had around. nothing to lose. So at that point, it was like a part-time job. And I was like, okay, well, I know lashes are like a great thing. I knew I needed to do nails as well, but I wasn't trained in nails. So I said, okay, let's start with lashes because I knew it was like something that was super popular. So I started doing lashes and one of my best friends was an um, in-home Pilates instructor. Okay. And so I did her lashes one day. And all of her clients then said, I want those lashes. And it was something that was like not really popular yet because it was 2014. Eyelash extensions. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it was like, oh, I heard about this, but I don't know how easy accessible it is. So I started doing all of her clients. And then that's where I met uh, Kat and Nat. Okay. And, and who so are Kat and Nat? Kat Sorry, I don't, know the, I don't know the story here now. 
So Pat and Matt are two um, very popular mummy bloggers. Oh, I do know. Yes. 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 And so they have a really good following, and they're very local. Um, they're in Toronto. And they met me at a charity event and said, oh, I heard that you did lashes for the woman that was running the charity event at um, St. Mike's Hospital. And I was like, yeah. And they wanted me to come and do their lashes. So as soon as they started doing their lashes, they were like, okay, Amy, so now that you do lashes, you're going to bring on somebody to do hair, somebody to do tan, somebody. I'm like, so they were the ones that really pushed me like fast to start hiring more people. So who was your first hire? So with my circle already at Love It or List It, I knew that I had a lot of contacts from mm. people that were, you know, makeup artists right. and hairstylists and all of that. So I reached out to some of them saying, hey, would any of you guys like to come and work with me as well? Because it's all like contract workers, yeah. so they can work they can, anywhere. Their schedule, yeah, for sure. And so, yeah, a bunch of them said yes. So, and where was the location? Like, did you kind of have a niche location that you were servicing at that time, or was it all GTA? Uh, pretty much Toronto okay. was where we started. Um, anywhere that um, the people that I hired would work and lived would service that area. So if it was like uh, Etobicoke, they would kind of do Etobicoke and Toronto. Right? Okay. And so yeah, so we started doing hair um, right right after spray tans and nails. So that kind of morphed into like, okay, now we're doing like quite a few things. And then it just kept going. Kept like, spiraling. Yeah. And spiraling. So it sounds like really the, the key to your success, or at least getting a business up and running, was like really utilizing your network. For sure. Right? Yeah. And um, I would say like Kat and Matt are probably one of the biggest people that I would say were a, a huge impact on helping me with my business. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. So we started leveling up. Did at any point you feel like you needed um, like an influx of money in the business or was it kind of like funding itself? Were you kind of making a profit right away, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so I guess from 2014 till 2018, I was still working um, with Love It or List It, mm -hmm. probably 2017 more or less. And then, um, so I was funding it, like working full time and putting money back into the business. Mm -hmm. um, and still trying to keep it relatively small so I could still make money, but you know, grow the business at yeah. the same time. Yeah. And um, by 2018, that was when I was like, okay, I'm fully done with television and I'm going full on with this company. Wow, okay, so you left a job for that you've had for 15 years at that point. Yeah. Nice little security blanket. Yeah. And you decided to go all in. Can you tell me a little bit about what was going on in your head? Was it out of like, I'm just tired, I can't juggle? Was it, look, I think this is a huge opportunity that I should really lean into? Like, wh where was the headspace there? So in 2016, I got married. And so I said to my husband at the time, hey, like, I think that this is something that I really want to do. And um, would you support me leaving my full-time job and going full on with Wink and Wave? And so he was like, yeah, 100%. So I knew that I had a bit of security knowing that there was somebody that was also, because like before him, I was, I had owned my own house, worked a full-time job, and was working in the evenings creating Wink You're and Wave. You're doing it all yeah. yourself. Yeah, so I met him when I was having that whole thing right. already. So, so he already knew like this woman's clearly quite ambitious yeah. and she's juggling a lot. Yeah. So it probably was maybe a blessing in disguise for him to say like, let's focus on one thing. And, yeah. So and then I'll, I got you kind of thing. Yeah. Right? And with his schedule, he's an air traffic controller. He knew like, Hey, if you work a nine to five job, I probably will never see you mm. because their hours are crazy. Oh, okay. I don't know much about that. Yeah. Profession. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I was like, okay, well, if I have my own job, then I can make my own hours and, you know, see him more. So that was also kind of like a push to like really start going on my own. So yeah, in 2018, fully went on my own. I probably had about 10 um, contract workers with me. Okay. And um, just continued to like grow the team, grow the business, improve the website, um, and just kind of improve like the services that we were going to be offering and offering to. Um, and then from there, 
my, as the company was like growing and the team's growing, I was like, okay, like my goal is to like expand not only just the GTA, but like outside of the GTA. Mm -hmm. And there's been like a lot of requests for um, us to go into the States. And then I had like a few. So how, sorry, if you don't mind me asking, how, how do people like find you in that regard? Like, where's the request coming from? Do they just Google mobile beauty services and somehow you come up and then they're wondering um, how you can Most facilitate? of it all was through Instagram. Oh, okay. Instagram was probably like our number one driver for um, a service industry, right? Like it's huge for small businesses. Yeah. And um, I had a social media manager that I had met through Love It or List It and hired on from my company. Mm -hmm. And her and I had worked great together and I was like, you're going to be amazing and can I hire you yeah. to help me with Instagram? Because I was running it myself and I didn't know, you know, there's only so much you know about social media. So you can only take it so far. Yeah. yeah. And like without an so expert, time yeah. consuming, right? So it's a full, it's clearly a full time job for somebody. Yes, yeah. Yeah. So I hired somebody and, um, she's still with me today and she's amazing, Megan. And, uh, she helped definitely with, um, our Instagram and that's where most people found us. But word of mouth, I would say is like huge. Like people saw, Oh, you know, like great lashes is fun. Who did them? Right. Or like, just heard if they called their friend, oh, I can't talk to you right now. Someone's at my house doing my hair. And they'd be like, what? Who's doing your hair, right? So, and then like obviously Kat and Nat, them talking about it and posting on their social media, that was huge for us. Yeah, because like, they have a huge following. So sometimes you just need that little break almost, yeah, so to speak, right? Yeah, and because they're following our moms, it spoke to our audience. So they found you initially? Sorry, can we yeah. go back to that? So that was just out of sheer luck, but in hindsight, I mean, it what a great partner for you to reach out to. So like anyone who's watching, I'm thinking, you know, you got to really understand who your target market is, right? Yes. Like, so you're very clear about who it is that you're looking to provide the service to. I understand that I'm sure a lot of people that aren't stay at home moms or moms yeah. uh, are using it the service. Like, yeah, but executive women, you know, women that um, are working full time that are too busy or moms, right? Like it's a wide range of yeah. women that we are really speaking to. and. It was just like, hey, you know what? I can get an appointment to come to my house at 9 p.m. when you can't get that anywhere in Toronto. Like, some people are working so late, and then by the time they get home, put their kids to bed. Yeah, they only have that time they, afterwards, yeah, right? And they right? can, and everything's closed at that time. Um, okay, that this is so interesting. Okay, so people have been reaching out to you, but I, I, I want to kind of go back to when you started hiring more on the admin side, right? Um, because obviously, you hiring service providers. They were giving you, my guess is, the hours that they were available. That went into the app, and then they could choose. And, and my guess is you didn't really have to lead them that much. Like, they would kind of just go there directly to the client's home. Yeah, I mean, the key is hiring people that are very self-starters, motivated, women that I already knew and worked with in the past, and are, you know, very familiar with contract work. So they're all, you know, self-independent women that are just working right. for them smells and, and like you said you've yeah. seen what they're capable of doing on the admin side though I mean obviously you hire someone that you had previously worked with but was that difficult for you to kind of give away a little bit of the power like oftentimes I hear people say you know it's hard for me to think about getting an assistant for an example because I don't know how to actually delegate work was that easy for you um Definitely, it was easy. Oh, good. So, okay. Uh, well, Some people it's easy for. <laughs> I find because, like, I don't have experience with social media, and I knew that I could hire somebody that could do a better job than myself and that knew more than myself. I still feel that, you know, I always want to kind of keep my hands involved in it, mm -hmm. even though I fully trust her. But for sure, I knew that I needed to have somebody. And I know that, like, my time was being super short with like everything else that was going on that I knew that I was at a point where I had to make that decision to in order to grow I needed to hire someone yeah and I find that like this is something that I was talking about actually to one of our um, technicians is that in order for you to grow you have to hire people even if you're not at the point of growing in that moment the doors will only open if you have the people already there to open those doors so like maybe you're thinking at that moment, oh, I don't have the money to bring on an assistant. Bring on an assistant and that money will come. 
and yeah. those people will come. Yeah, people right? always kind of have it backwards, right? Yeah. Like, I'll wait until I have the money then to hire, but it's yeah. like you have to hire so that you can free your time so that you can go and grow yeah. the business so that you have the money to pay for them. And, like, there's so <laughs> many things out there right now, like grants. Um, there's even, like, if you partnered with Square, which... Um, we are right now, they do loans right now, mm -hmm. right? So if there's other ways to like get some money in order for you to like get to that next point, even if it's just a buffer. Yeah, did you um, go down the grant path though? Uh, so when COVID hit, so we are supposed to, my goal was to get into the United States by 2020. That mm -hmm. was like in my head, this is like what I need to do. My aunt, um, she has a place in Naples and I always, saw that a lot of our clients would go there in the winter and I was like that's I think where we need to be COVID then you know really I bought that yeah. yes and at that moment I was like oh no like I remember calling my dad it was March 15th and I was like dad this is gonna like ruin my business and he's probably like see you never should have quit school <laughs> <laughs> and I'm he's like <laughs> he's like you need to close the business right now and I'm like I was like bawling my eyes out and I was like how are these all my technicians going to live and that was like my biggest worry was like not even like myself how are my technicians going to even just make the next month meet you know and I was like oh my god so like they closed every service down for us besides RMT massages got it so but, you had to literally tell everyone like guys there's not gonna be any business yeah. and I don't know how long and these are friends of yours these are colleagues yeah. that, that you brought over yeah. And ho hopefully you still were maybe doing other work. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. Of a lot of, yeah, so the great thing also about Wink and Wave is it's so flexible. You make your own hours, you put your own schedule in. So you can work two, three jobs, whatever you want. If you're like a mom full time and you need to just pick up a few hours a week, we allow anything. There's no minimum to right. work with us, right? And that's the great thing is that, you know, you can't, there's no boundaries. Everyone can work. Do you ever it. feel like the, on the client side though, they're like, oh, why are there not more hours available? Like, do you ever hear that feedback? No, because we have multiple technicians for multiple Got services. Okay. Yeah. But the company is growing at a point where we're like, there's always Sometimes. a bit of a wait list. Yes, right? yes. But um, yeah, so 2020 hit and um, my cousin, she's an awesome supporter of Wink and Wave. And she was like, uh, Amy, I saw this grant I think you should apply for it and sends it to me in a text and it was like what are the chances I've never applied for a grant I don't even know that we'll get one so and you read I was like, uh, and like the paperwork for these grants like oh, sometimes yeah, yeah, it's yeah. overwhelming yeah, yeah, just yeah. to even start the process right yeah and this one was um, a TD with a visa grant so uh, visa was partnering with TD to offer ten thousand um, dollars with another company called I fund women okay and so um, I applied for the grant, and um, I Fund Women is an uh, American-based company that supports women entrepreneurs. So Visa Canada partnered with, yeah, I Fund Women, and they were one of the first, I guess, kind of Canadian brands that partnered with them. So I, I filled out the application, and I had to do like a two-minute video. And I remember like sitting at my like dining table and just, I think I was in my PJs because I'm still like in shock of like, oh my God, we're on our third week or fourth week of COVID, yeah. and like whatever. And so I filmed it and then I got a call like three months later. Oh, it so it took a little bit of time. Yeah. And you probably had uh, given up or forgotten I about forgot it completely. About it. Yeah. yeah. And then they were like, you're one of our runner runners up. And I was like, oh my God, I just like remember crying, being like, you're kidding me. Cause like at that point, like I'm still paying for the website to run, like everything to run, like a whole, like they, our insurance like everything had to still be in place but I remember having phone calls with everyone saying like can you give me a discount on everything because like we're shut down right now and like I'm just trying to fund this myself yeah so and, and were people pretty amicable in that regard yeah, or? Yeah, yeah people were very good there's definitely like I think every company was really like trying to give us like you know a half price rate or whatever and so after a couple more like interviews and stuff that I had with um, Visa Canada and I Fund Women, they um, said, "Oh, can we have a final meeting with you? And uh, it'll be on Zoom. And it's on Friday or whatever." So I was like, "Okay, sure." So I was like, "Okay, I gotta like make sure that I look good." And they were only Zoom. giving it to one person. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, okay. uh, no, I think there was actually maybe five. I can't remember how. But I'm sure went. the list. But there's was... different categories, right? Okay. So it was from my category that um, I was applying for. Okay, so, so you get all dolled up yeah, the first the, time in 
yeah. months. Yeah, so I was like, oh my god, I got my hair done, put lipstick on, and uh, my husband, I remember, went out and bought um, some champagne, because he was like, if this is good news, I want to pop some champagne. Yeah, That's so, so sweet. Yeah, so then they, um, they yeah, they, on Zoom, they told me that I won $10,000, and on top of that, you get like a year of... Um, support through I Fund Women. So you get to do like a lot of their sessions, meet with a business um, manager, kind of like. Like pe some people are there to help coach help you. Help coach you, yeah. To yeah. think about what's the next step. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just give you advice throughout the year and uh, meet other awesome female entrepreneurs, right? From all over, which is really cool. And just open the doors to other opportunities. So yeah, so yeah, I won and then that helped us like build out our website better. It mm -hmm. helped us um, just overall with like hiring more staff. So that's shortly after, that was when Jen came in. To okay. The so at that time though, did we kibosh the idea of moving into the US? Were yeah, you kind of like, let me just hold. focus? Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, so like who knows how long this pandemic's gonna last for? And who knows like what services we're gonna be able to offer? because uh, I'm sure you guys remember it was like every month was kind of something every, different. Yeah. It was like, okay, yeah, you're allowed to do massages. Oh, no, stop, you can't. Right. And You can do eyelashes because you're wearing a mask. Okay, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> like I remember one of my technicians was in Thailand during the pandemic, and they opened up being uh, us being able to do services for two months. It was like August, September. She came home, was able to work for two months, then they shut us down again, and then we're like, okay, great. So we made money for two months like crazy. Like yeah. we all worked like... Oh, everyone or, needed yeah. all the help they could get. Yeah. We all let ourselves go during that. Yeah, like months. it was like, oh my yeah. God, my hair. My, yeah, so uh, then, uh, yeah, and so Jen was one of my clients from a long time. I had been doing her lashes, and that's how I initially met Jen. Okay, my, my, and what was she looking for, part-time work? Or did you have a role already? So um, Jen, obviously, she's got like an events background, and... She said to me, and she had mentioned it a few times, hey, I'd love to do stuff with you. She's like, Amy, I can see that you're overworked and you really need help and I want to come in and I want to help you. And Jen's energy is like amazing. And like her and I- Jen's the best. Yeah. I hope you're watching this, Jen. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> so like I, her energy is amazing and I feel like she's a great purple, people person. She's very infectious and I feel like her and I have like a really good- chemistry together like mm -hmm. we get each other like you know when you can just like say something and you can kind of finish someone's sentence yeah that's yeah. Jen right yeah she's like she can pick up anything and run with it and she has the passion and I think because she was a client she saw the business saw how good it was saw that it worked for her like she just had both of her kids and I was coming to her house she was like putting them to Juggling bed while I was craziness. Yeah. yeah yeah so she got it and she was like I can see how much I needed you guys so I know that there's a need for this business and so, yeah, she, and with her working, or her um, cottage being in Muskoka and her living in Oakville, she was like, I, I can do both areas with you. Like, okay. Because, so I bought a cottage in 2019 and uh, just before the pandemic. And I wanted oh, to. Well, that's lucky. <laughs> yeah. And so I wanted to um, expand the. So, as yeah, because we, weekend, I, I can see a lot of people being like, out of the city, but that's when they have their free time, but I'm up there and I could use a service now, not yes. you know, on a Tuesday night or whatever. Yeah, so like during 2020, um, with massages being the only thing available, that was what um, we were doing in Muskoka. And so I saw that they were fully booked, like anyone that wanted a massage, it was like two weeks wait at yeah. least to try to like get in. And so um, I said to Jen, I would love for you to come on and just help in any way that you are able to, you know? So we kind of just started doing small stuff. Um, she was helping with hiring, doing a lot of back end stuff. And um, now she's like right in there helping with like booking all the like big group events. We, so now we've really branched into having like a corporate arm and we do all sorts of corporate events now. Right, yeah, well we were talking off camera, I mean, 
I'm sure you have bigger than this, but like we, we're, me I'm a member of a ski club and you do the, the ladies day and there's like a yeah. ladies day circuit that goes on at every single ski yeah. club up in Collingwood yeah. and they all need services like that. And yeah. so you've been able to do that as well. Yeah. And then like we do the Toronto Blue Jays. So we do a lot of the, the wives there. We do like they're welcoming every like season when they start. We do a lot of different things and um, we're actually even doing an event today for like a law firm. So, oh wow! Yeah, so there's a lot of like, I think since COVID's hit, um, a lot of corporations now have like a wellness um, spend fund for their associates and staff. So um, that's where we've really noticed, hey, this is something that we never really thought of. We always just thought we are the like we come to your home business. Yeah, and but now, we can come to the office, right? Well, now it's like we can come and do a retreat wherever your like weekend retreat is. We can come to yeah your office. Um, so our corporate arm has now like grown crazy. Staff, I hope my staff's not getting any smart ideas. Over here. <laughs> They're <laughs> like, so, where are we like, doing our retreat? <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and I think that it's just like a nice add-on. Like, oh, we we did like chair massages at different places. Um, yeah, and um, it's just like kind of like a nice little add-on, and there's nothing for them to think about. We just bring our entire team. Now, out of curiosity, is the facilitating of that difficult? Like, you're you're organizing a lot of people, a lot of logistics, I presume. Is that, like, a stressful part of your job? Is that the easy part of your job? Well, um, it's, like, between Jen and I, we um, do it together. Mm -hmm. I would say Jen's amazing at it and, like, has a lot of people that she has to manage. Um, but... It's, uh, I, I think it runs pretty smoothly. We've done so many of them now. It's kind of like second nature. Like yeah. we, we get it, we know everything. And our team has done so many that it's like, I think the first few we were kind of like, oh, and then now that we're in like the smooth thing of it, we could probably do two or three a week now. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then um, as that was like happening, I, I was like, oh my God, we're really noticing that all these like corporations are doing, you know, things for their staff. Um, at the same time, we were noticing um, resorts were contacting us asking if we could serve their um, clients at their hotels. And so I was like, okay, so now we're going to hotels. Is that because their spot, like they had kind of shut down their, their, in, their yeah. spa services? So their spa Because you know what, their spa, sorry, I, I feel like light bulbs are going off. Like no. the spa, they probably realized like we don't need people to be sitting here yes. all day when we only have one booking, yes. right? Yeah. So we may as well outsource that to somebody else. And I think else. with COVID, when it hit, they were like, a lot of them got shut down. And so they're like, okay, well, we want to still please our guests. We can't afford to have a spa in our hotel, mm -hmm. but we want to bring spa services to their room. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm sure people like even better in some yeah, regard. Yeah, I don't like I can roll out of bed onto a massage table. Yeah, like, who that's doesn't great. love that, right? Like, <laughs> I don't even have to take my PJs off. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah, I think like right after COVID, I guess it was right after COVID hit. Um, the first one that opened up was the Muskoka Beer Spa, and so we yes. started doing massages there with them, mm -hmm. and uh, we're growing. Them. I say I yes because I, I went there with Jen. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's Amazing. a fun time. Oh, yeah, it's super fun there. <laughs> you, you, it's like spa services, but like party atmosphere. Yes, like yes. it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not spa like, but no. it's definitely fun. Yeah, so we have cabanas there and we have indoor rooms now that we just finished and opened up for massages there. And as we started serving them, then other resorts started contacting us. So we also serve um, Muskoka Bay Resort. Mm -hmm. um, so we do um, in-room services for them, as well as we have a women's um, steam room and spa room there. So we do massages and facials. So you really had to there. find people like all over the place to yeah. help facilitate yeah. all yeah. this, so we have right? Yeah, so we have a bigger team in Muskoka now than we even do in the GTA because right. of how big the demand is up there. Wow. This is unbelievable how some things so small like a simple idea that you just notice yeah um, by you know keeping your eyes open and watching your sister has really spiraled and, and snowballed not yeah. spiraled uh, into such something so big I feel like my question for you might be around and like without COVID COVID aside what do you think has been maybe the biggest hurdle that you've been surprised about being an entrepreneur now that you've kind of had to jump through I think the biggest hurdle is um, you're having to learn a lot yourself and um, talking to other people 
definitely helps, but like you're so busy running your own business and so deep in your own business, sometimes you don't even like know how to do something. Like there's not a lot of, there's resources, but a lot of the times you don't have the time to probably go and look for them, right? Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of it is like learning stuff on your own. Is the a lot of trial thing. and error. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's funny, like I never even, like my, I always thought, okay, this is, the business is, we're coming to people's homes and we're serving clients in their homes and, and moms and um, working women. And I never even thought, hey, I could have a corporate arm. Like that never even was a, a thought in my mind where it was like presented to me. So now that it's being presented to me, I'm backtracking on like, okay, what else do I need to have in place? Like. Yeah, there's just right. different things that you need to do. It's so true because I started a business two years ago. And you think, you know, oftentimes people have rose-colored glasses on when they think about what entrepreneurship is like and owning a business. And it's like, yeah. oh, I have this idea and I'm going to think all these things through and I'm going to write down everything I need and it's going to go from A to B to C. Oftentimes it's like A to Z, back to D, oh, yeah. forward to W. Like you're all yeah. over the place and you, you often have to pivot backwards and redo things and rejig things. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. oftentimes the for the people who work with you, I imagine, yeah. well, you're how what's the admin team like? Just you and Jen or is it you you no and Megan? Yeah, Social and media. Raquel. I have um, okay. so Raquel takes care of our so our business is all female run. Yeah. All the way back to like the back end. So Raquel takes care of our website. She does all the updates, all the designs, make sure it functions properly. She gets my panic texts at one AM being like the website stopped working. And does she respond at 1 a.m.? She's amazing. Yeah, oh my she's god! Awesome. Yeah. So do you, I feel like you've really hired people who want to be part of the growth of it. Like yeah. if they almost see it as a little bit of their own. For because sure, I think so. Otherwise, someone would say, "Well, I'm not going to respond to that at that time." Or yeah, whatever. and I think the way like I, the way I've always thought about Wink and Wave is that it's everyone's. Like we're all growing together. We all want. We're all here to help each other. We're all here to like get something from it. So it's not like it's my company. It's our company, right? right? It's like, I want everyone to like, feel like it's theirs and get something out of it. Like if there's something that they want to learn or something more that they want to do, I want them to do it. I'm not have you found, have you found like being in that leadership role tough to like juggle because they got their personal lives going on. They have their dreams and hopes for what they want out of their careers. Have you found that difficult or, or have you had a good strategy of how to do that? Um, I don't, I think that like, I just try to get everyone to like make sure that they communicate saying like what they want and I always am like we always check in with each other um formally or informally is it more just informally how you, okay yeah Got it. yeah I think with the way like how busy we are and like Jen and I I feel like back so I'm like Jen I text you all the time like random stupid things about whatever about the company and like, I never I forget to ask you how are you doing <laughs> yeah like I'm just like oh my god we're so like deep in and then all of a sudden I'll be like oh my god Jen I didn't even like you know say whatever whatever to you right right so, like but I it think, sounds like there's a lot of love there yeah right like, and everyone knows like we're all in this together yeah and like if ever there's anything we're all there to support each other and we're all there to fix something together and we're all yeah so I think we all have a really good team and we all are there to like back each other up and grow together so and I think that like when I talk to everyone about hey this, these are my visions like what do you guys want to do they want to do it with me right like they love it all do they so, come to you also with a lot of ideas and yeah or sometimes you think it you know it's overwhelming because you can't act on every good idea yeah no like even all my technicians will like give me feedback too like oh hey I met this awesome client they gave me like some good tips. Um, they want to do this with us. You should reach out to them. So they love seeing that the company is growing and want to be a part of it, right? So it's great. Like everyone gives awesome feedback, and like our clients also want to see the company grow. So it was funny. We had a client this summer who um, is American, spends their summers in Muskoka, and mm -hmm. a lot of them are like that. And they're like, how fast can we get you to the States? Like, we want you in Florida because we want to continue using your services. Right. And so there's so much support. So there's still, that's part of the vision, I guess, yeah. still for the future is uh -huh. to move down. Into the yeah. States. So um, I'm going to be there for the month of November and um, starting to get the company up and running out in Naples in Florida. Wow. Yeah. You're one busy woman. Yeah. How, and how does your husband now feel about this, that he's uh Well, I've left my husband now, so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure he probably, you know, watches he, from afar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, but good yeah. for you. You know, um, 
I have had women, this is my, uh, I think it's 23rd episode, 22nd episode, I've had women from all different walks of life, like people who weren't born here, people who were born here, people who are married with kids, people who are married, no kids, um, people who are, are single, no kids, people who are moms, single, and it's, it's such an interesting community, and that's why I, I like that you said, you know, we're, we're sticking with the hiring women because your target market is also women, and yeah. there's just something about women understanding what everyone else is going through, like yeah. no matter what walk of life you're going through. Yeah. Obviously, you would have had to go through that while you're running this business. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, a divorce yeah. Is, yeah. is never easy or fun. And I think so fun. many people are going through that post-COVID. Like, I think a lot of people, when they realized how hard things were and they were with their partners for that time, I think made them look at their own life think and think twice, like, what is it that I really want or what really makes me happy? I know like that was for myself. I was like, okay, I'm not happy. And I know that like now it's affecting the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to leave. Like I have it's to. It's interesting. So. I feel like you have this quality where you get an idea in your head and you're very capable of making a decision for yourself. You know, sometimes yeah. like when we talked about you deciding like, I don't want to go to school anymore. I'm going to go yeah. down this path. And relationships are even tougher because there are families involved and there's yeah. other people involved and whoever was at the wedding you feel like there's um what will people think of, of me what will people think of me how did yeah. you deal with that like that judgment if you don't mind me asking um uh, well i think i'm still dealing with it i've only been separated for a year and i think that when i first like left and made that decision i was like uh, what, like I know my parents are super supportive and they were going to be behind me 100%, so I wasn't worried about my family. It was more about like what will clients think, what will like anyone that I do business with think, or what, you know, it's always like the people that don't really know you or don't really know your story, right? right. Yeah, the people who are inside, yeah. they love you, so they're going to yeah. be supportive one yeah. way or another. But yeah, yeah. The, those more peripheral people, right? Yeah. You might make a snap judgment. Yeah, and... Um, I think that maybe because COVID, when that hit, I think maybe more people are understanding of like what makes you happy now. And I think that there's been a change in people's perception of like, yeah, like I think that I need to put myself first and like what makes me happy. So I think, I, I don't know, I, I've had a lot of really positive feedback. Nobody's said anything, you know, negative or, and everyone's been very isn't that supportive. Funny? That's also what, yeah. like our fear in our minds of what we think people are going to say or yeah. think. And oftentimes when you actually do something and you pull off the band-aid, rip yeah. off the band-aid, you realize like, oh, everyone's pe here. Everyone's here, you know, and uh, like certainly the people that I need to be here. And yeah. then everyone else, you know, maybe they judge you for a second in their own minds. Who, yeah. knows? Who knows? You'll who never cares. know because they didn't say it verbally, but like also who cares because they just went on with their life. Like they're not thinking about you all no. day, every day. No. So and it's funny when I've told like clients and uh, other women that I've worked with, they then share their story and they're like, oh my God, like I'm going through this or, you know, how did you do it? Or can I call you for like advice or, you know, just anything. And I'm like, I think that like the more you share with people, then the more people are going to want to, you know, help or be there for you or whatever. And it's funny when you think back of like, just even beauty services. There used to be this time where it was like, oh, did she, did she do like Shameful, that? Yeah, right? Did, like, I don't want to tell people that I'm getting my lashes done. Right. Like, I want people to think they're real. And it's right. like, what? Like, it's okay. Like, things are okay that, you know, we do things for ourselves to make ourselves feel better. And, and we shouldn't have shame to want to do that, right? That's so funny that you mentioned that because you're right. I have noticed that shift. It definitely it's was, slow. and it, it, it was slow, but now it's funny because when you get together with your girlfriends, or at least for me, mm -hmm. you know, it's, oh, what's going on in your life? And, oh, like I noticed your eyebrows, or I noticed your eyelashes, or whatever it is, or your yeah. lips, or your hair, or whatever, yeah. you know, whatever the change is, but it's more celebrated, right? It's yeah. not like shame on you. No. You, like, you should look naturally beautiful. It's like, no. we're all out here just trying and our what? best. And I'm probably <laughs> saying, like, oh, hey, I noticed this because I want it, yes. right? Yes. It's, it's out of a compliment, yeah. not out of like a, oh. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. a negative place. So now it's like coming to be like, okay, especially with like cosmetic injections. It used to be like, oh my God, that woman, I think she's getting Botox, right? And now it's like, oh, I heard my best friend got Botox and now I want to get it done, right? And it's about empowering each other, yeah, right? To, we're all to here do to it. Each we other. want it here to make other women feel good. I feel like the more honest and open I've been about not just 
procedures or whatever. Yeah. Not that I get procedures done, really. But, like, anything. just anything in, like, my, my personal life even. Mm -hmm. When I share my fears on camera and I've shared, like, stories like you just did yeah. about your separation, it, it almost removes the armor. And then it's like no one really has anything to say on you because you've already said it. Yeah. So it's not like you have this deep, dark secret that mm -mm. you're trying to hide. It's like, this is me. I'm human. I'm flawed. I'm not perfect. Yeah. I don't try to pretend to be. No. And then there's something very freeing about that on the other side, don't you find? Yeah. Like, if, if somebody's not going to like me because now I'm separated, well, so be it, right? Right. Like, that's not my problem. And that's it's usually, very... what I usually find is it's, they're harsh on you because they're judging their self harshly. For sure, right? it's something that's internal. It's yeah. something that's internal, right? So we always tend to project onto other people like the things yeah. that we fear and dislike about ourselves. And so I try to come at it with that angle of empathy, I guess, yeah. um, understanding where people are coming from. Hurt people hurt people, to use, you know, But that phrase, like goes but to another thing is like the thought of, hey, can I leave my husband and still run a business? The, what, that was like the biggest thing. Because I think that is the mindset of a lot of women is like, can I leave my husband and still have, take care of my kids and still, you know, survive? Like, can I do that? And that was like something in my head is like, how is my life going to be? How, like, how are everything, like, how is everything going to work? Really? It's the unknown and that's yeah. very, very scary, super, right? Super scary, yeah. But you're doing it. Yeah, no, so it, I think you. like the, you, you think about it for months and then I was like, you know what, I'm going to think about it and then I'm going to be like 50 and look back at myself and be like, I'm still unhappy and... I wish I had made that decision faster. And like, that's one of the that's things that's- a scarier that's, place to be. Yeah, yeah, and I think like, that's definitely something that I've learned um, in business over the years is that um, I'm not gonna wait anymore. Like, I think that like, if you're listen to your feelings and listen to yourself, then like, don't wait. Don't make them, don't think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll just get through this and then, you know, Maybe I can live like this for another 10 I'll years. I'll wait till I yeah. save. I'll wait till the kids are older. Yeah. I'll wait until yeah. whatever happens. Things won't get, don't, things won't happen unless you make change, right? Yeah. So, and that's just like, if you have an idea about a business, the business is just going to not be there unless you actually take action. Well, like, it's so interesting because a lot of people have a lot of great ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I hear people all day long, oh, I have this idea, I have this idea, I have this idea, or they'll see someone else doing it and they'll say, I had that idea first. But the difference is not you that you it. had a good idea, it's that they did it, yeah. you didn't. Yeah. And that's really the, the only difference. And once you start down that path, yeah. you start to get a little bit of momentum and it starts to keep going. Yeah. And now you're at this place where you know people are begging you to go all, all across the continent yeah. for them, right? And you probably never even thought about that. You were just like, let me just build this side hustle. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, because like, when, yeah, when I first started, I just thought it was just gonna be Toronto for sure. And um, like another awesome thing, that's like happened with Wink and Wave is that with the connections that we have with our clients, we've been able to like help a lot of different women going through different struggles in their lives. So like we've had um, clients that have had cancer and that they wanted us to come to their home to like cut their hair oh. because they didn't want to do that in a salon. Like right, a public being, space or yeah. Yeah, in a salon and having to like cut your hair all short and like be surrounded by strangers. Like, yeah. I maybe, like you, maybe you're crying and you yeah, want a little privacy. Yeah. And, yeah. And so we've had like, those were crazy moments that we've had with some of our hairstylists going into the homes and it was like such an intimate moment. And like, they would write to me after being like, this is why your business is great. Like, just like those kind of things. And then like, same with like the Ronald McDonald house. We've had a few clients that were living there with their kids. And it was like, wow, I can- It I can, can be, be there for months yeah, too, right? Yeah, so it, we were going into their home, or you know, the Ronald McDonald home, just to, you know, do something to make the mom feel better in that time, right? So, it's, and it's funny. Uh, I heard something once um, during a recession. Um, lipstick sales spike. They actually go up during a recession because yeah. women still want a small little piece of like luxury feel, or something feel, for me, yeah. something for me, something to feel good. And lipstick is more affordable than probably some of the other things that people do, Well, right? I think also after the pandemic with us wearing masks, it was like, oh my God, I can wear a lipstick again and people can see like my smile, yeah. right? So that yeah. was huge for So it's sure. like, you know, these, these little things, they seem maybe to the outside person who doesn't understand it, like shallow or silly, yeah. but 
for a lot of women, it's very, very important. And it, it like, yeah, helps it us get up better. every day and yeah. go out and, like, conquer, try to conquer the world yeah. and do the best that we can, whether that's taking care of kids or working or whatever. Yeah. I so appreciate your, your being here and being so honest and, and upfront and open. Um, to close it off, though, today, I, I try to always leave it open to the guests to maybe share an anecdote, something, a lesson learned um, that maybe we haven't touched on um, to, to any of the viewers or listeners who, who might be going through maybe something similar that, than what you're going through. Is there anything kind of left that we haven't touched on that you'd like to share? Um, I just, I guess, would say don't let your fear hold you back on doing what you want to do. Like, you'll always wonder, oh, I wish that I had done something. Like, really, you have nothing to lose. If, if my idea didn't work out, I could go get another job, really, right? So, like, really, you don't, I mean, if, I'm sure there's a lot of women that with great ideas, and those great ideas can only become something else if you try it. I find... Fear is definitely the, the preventer of a lot of things, and it brings up a lot of excuses in people. I don't know how to do this. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. But, I mean, you're sitting here today not having known how to do this. You didn't know how to develop an app or who you needed to reach yeah. out to. You didn't know how to necessarily hire people. You might not have done that in the past. Yeah. You didn't know how to lead people. You don't know how to go into the U.S. and the tax implications. But these things can all be figured out if you just have tenacity. And I think a lot of it has to do with just this underlying belief in themselves. Yeah, I right? think, yeah having the confidence and and being like i'm okay to fail at something but i want to try it like i'm gonna be okay if i yeah. fail at something i love that right because you're right you might fail yeah. and that's the truth yeah but you've learned something from it yeah right? you're failing forward so to speak yeah exactly well thank you i think that's such a beautiful and touching place to end our conversation well, today i appreciate all of your time where can people find you where's the best place for them to find you on instagram or so, direct to website yeah our instagram is wink and wave to or our website is winkandwave.com. Okay, guys. Go get all the beauty treatments that you need. And wellness. And <laughs> wellness. Sorry, my apologies. And wellness. I never forget those massages, I right? Know, well, right? thank you again. Thank you. And guys, we'll see you next time.